So in today's session, we're going to be uh, talking a lot about uh, overlays and the cloud VPN functionality. Um, this allows the edges to talk to one another, to create tunnels, to gateways, and uh, to even connect to third-party sites. Um, if you haven't watched uh, my previous videos, I do encourage you to watch them, uh, especially uh, the one about the dynamic multipath optimization because it shows you the benefits of having uh, the connectivity between the edges done this way. And also the one about the gateways, uh, because I'm not going to be spending a lot of time in explaining why they are there and why you should be using them. So with this in mind, let's do a few whiteboards and then we'll go in the orchestrator and I'll show you how easy it is to enable Cloud VPN. Talking about overlays, uh, you have to understand that the box itself, the edge, um, will treat by default all the routed interfaces as possible ways to connect to the outside world. As any uh, other uh, switch or um, UTM, at the edge allows you to set an interface as either a switched interface or a routed interface. Um, and in the case you define it as uh, routed, the interface will start sending a tunnel initiation messages towards its primary and a secondary gateway. You'll see that the overlay associated to a routing interface by default is called auto detect. And to be honest, it's fine to leave it like that if uh, you plug in any sort of public circuits. However, let's take the example of uh, the second interface here because it's it's connected to the MPLS, so uh, it doesn't reach the gateway. And even if it could, even if there is a way out of the MPLS, uh, then the gateway will actually register this public IP address, whatever the MPLS bridges with the internet, as the edges IP address instead of the private IP here. So in case you are terminating private circuits on the edge, you leave the one overlay on, but you mark it as user defined. If you do any uh, sort of routing downstream and you want a routed interface towards the LAN, uh, the best thing you can do is to uh, disable the one overlay. So these are the three options you have. So we killed this uh, interface. Uh, we told it uh, don't do an overlay here. We left this on auto and we put this on uh, user defined just to make sure that um, other edges connect to this private address, not to the public one here. So what the edge will do is that it will automatically connect to the primary and the secondary gateway on all the interfaces where the overlay is set on auto detect. Now, by default, we assume that the, um, any the MPLS that you're using might not have a um, breakout to the internet. So the edge will not try to establish that connectivity. However, if you do wish uh, to replicate it, and you know that the edge can reach its gateways, you can just uh, tick a box and say that the service to the gateways is reachable. So in this case, we can go like this, for example. In case you're using multiple MPLS providers, and obviously you might want to differentiate between one and the other, uh, you can set a name for each of your user-defined overlays. So let me show you how this looks like in the orchestrator. You have my edge at home. You have the interfaces, some set as switched interfaces. You'll see these two as access. Some are my one interfaces, which at the moment I'm using um, public circuits for both. You'll see that they're already uh, auto detected and their names pop out. However, let's just say I'm introducing uh, an MPLS circuit at the site. I'll then need to repurpose one of the LAN interfaces. I'll click edit. I will turn it to rooted, and all of a sudden you will see that there is a one overlay option. 
Uh, I'll make sure I'll leave it ticked. If it was going to the LAN, uh, I could just untick it here. And as I'm using a public link, I will mark it as user defined. We update this. We click save, and you'll see that. The orchestrator is asking us for an additional piece of information, and that is to add the user defined overlay. So I go here, I say this overlay is private, I'm giving it a name and TLS circuit. This is the tick box. I have to check if I know that there is a way for the edge to get to the gateways. You'll see uh, it even tells me what would be the public addresses. And if I click advance, I will be given more settings. First of all, I can choose to define the bandwidth manually in case uh, the gateway will not be able to do that role. And uh, secondly, I can give it a private network name. So this is where, if you have multiple MPLS provider, you'll be able to uh, differentiate between them. Now, there are uh, three different entities that a branch can communicate with. It can communicate with data centers where edges are placed, uh, so the hubs of a hub spoke topology. They can communicate with other branches or they can communicate with uh, third-party sites. And we discussed previously that they can be older data centers that might already have firewalls or routers there, uh, anything that supports IPsec, basically. Um, there might be uh, cloud security services, such as Zscaler, for example, uh, or even infrastructure as a service in case you don't want to terminate uh, one of the virtual edges in it. So just by enabling Cloud VPN, you will see those three options. Um, first of all, it's related to uh, how you connect to third parties. As previously said, we will be choosing um, two gateways, potentially, if you uh, choose the high availability, that are close to the third party, as opposed to your primary and secondary gateway. Uh, the branch will create an overlay across any available links. And this means you'll be able to take advantage of DMPO as close as possible to the third party. Also, new versions of code will allow you to connect the edge directly via IPsec to the third party. But remember that uh, we are not able to use DMPO for that. Secondly, it's about connecting to the data center. Um, in this case, you'll be able to specify one or multiple hubs. Uh, and once you do that, the branch will have permanent tunnels. And last but not least, the branches um, sometimes need to communicate with each other. and. Uh, Although uh, they do that by default, if you're using any sort of hub uh, or even a gateway, if you don't have any hubs in regions, for example, and you're afraid that the latency might be a problem, you can actually use the gateway to take the traffic and spit it back. It might not work sometimes with MPLS. Usually we say that if you use uh, any sort of gateway, you should be looking at a pure internet play. Um, but then if you want to take MPLS into consideration and possibly either e do some underlay routing in case uh, the overlay fails, uh, if you take, want to take advantage of that, you might want to look at using physical appliances in your hubs. But in case you want the branches to communicate directly, you can enable that via the Cloud VPN. And in this case, the first few packets will flow to the hub, whatever that is the physical edge or the gateway. And this will actually buy some time. So the edges can form a on-demand tunnel between themselves. And once this is formed, we will then use the shortest path. The beauty of this is that if um, 
the tunnel is no longer used after 180 seconds we will bring it down why we do that well it's obvious that if you want each edge to connect to everything else as a full mesh you will need a pretty big box uh, and also you will be running out of tunnel count uh, and uh, routing table and in order to minimize that uh, with dynamic tunnels you can make sure that you reduce those, those tunnel counts to the minimum so how does this translate uh, into the orchestrator it's very easy you have the cloud vpn option here uh, under uh, the device tab you turn it on you have the three options that we discussed uh, do you want to for example enable a third-party site I already have a termination with Zscaler defined, but it's up to you to just add a new VeloCloud site. You give it a name, and then also you you say where you want to connect to. So, for example, you might have a Cisco ISR, uh, Palo Alto, or uh, an Azure Virtual Hub as well. So, once you do that, you will see different types of settings here. You can enable the connectivity between the branches and hubs. Uh, and this is where you select the edges acting as hubs. Um, nothing for you to define on the hub site. This is just the termination I use in AWS. Obviously, you can backhaul all the traffic there uh, if you wish to do so, rather than do a direct internet access or use the gateways. And the last thing is the branch to branch VPN. So if you want the branches to talk to one another, you just tick that box. Uh, but you have to choose uh, between the cloud gateways, um, so we use the primary secondary or the super gateways in case you don't share uh, the primaries or secondaries, or you can use the hubs. You have to again select the hubs, click OK, and then it's up to you to enable the dynamic branch to branch uh, VPN. You also see here a button called Isolate Profile. And when this happens, you actually be able to take part of your state and make sure that certain edges only talk to the ones you want as opposed to everything else. Um, so in case you might have a deployment in Asia and one in Europe and you just want to make sure that they don't talk uh, with one another or they don't build tunnels, you just build isolation profiles for each and that will make sure to keep them separate. Uh, where obviously you can, um, if you have a data center connection between them, uh, you can use your own routing protocols to bring traffic uh, to and fro from each part of the world.